card we're gonna burn a nine we're gonna burn a nine here playing some blackjack with some first base strategy and uh of course the first base strategy uh as you know or if you don't know uh let me uh, make sure i got uh, everything set up right um it's based upon the last 10 and we thought we'd do a little demo of it without setting the cards up and uh, see how it works out or at least talk through some concepts of it so that everyone gets the idea of uh of how to do it so uh without further ado we got rail rabbit here from beat the casino he's over there in the philippines and uh you know hopefully some other folks will stop by um is a uh, rail rabbit uh plays some blackjack over there at uh, what's the name of that uh over there rail rabbit the new star casino in cebu city oh new star casino in cebu okay all right so uh, i know you're primarily a baccarat player but we're trying to get some more uh you know non-traditional blackjack we see all this stuff with about blackjack all the time uh basic strategy and all this stuff but uh we thought we'd do some uh first base uh strategy with uh with uh, uh non-random cards and how to play how to bet uh when you're actually looking uh setting at the first base position so it's an interesting concept uh you know it's went to alter basic strategy and uh you're not actually counting so uh we're, we're gonna be saying we're setting here at uh, first base so you gotta let me know if you can see the table yet like as soon as it comes up here i'll get a better idea of what uh what everybody can see um so i guess i gotta move this over here can you see that king yeah i got it there Okay, uh, position, and we'll be playing this this position. And here's second player, and we'll have third base, okay? And then uh, then we'll have the dealer's card, okay? And then we'll go to first base again. Third base, third base, and we'll do this. So uh, all those, we'll play four players. Uh, can you see it okay? The, the dealer's cards, I can only see about half the cards. Oh, all right. Well, let's move it down a little bit. There we go. So you see the three now? There, there you go. Yeah, that's better. I can I can maybe move it. Uh, let me get a little bit. Uh, I guess I took it in tighter there. There we go. There you go. That's better. There we go. Let's do there. Okay. So, uh you know, uh, most players play basic strategy. We're going to alter basic strategy and talk about when to alter it. And we're going to play the uh, the first base strategy, which is you're your, your, your basing your bet off the last card, assuming that the cards are non-random. And so uh, consequently, because they're non-random, uh, hopefully there's a certain amount of predictability uh, to the game that we can exploit. Uh, now, you know, the problem with only playing with one shoe is you're pretty much uh, bound by, uh, you know, one shoe. So we're going to go ahead and, and do the best we can with one shoe and uh, see if the concept holds up and uh, talk about each one here. Uh, just, just trying to clear some better. But um, anyway, so th this game, we're going to assume that everybody's going to play pretty much straight basic uh, except us. <laughs> okay. So 13, uh, everybody would probably stand here. Let, let's just play it basic. Okay, so there the dealer broke, so no best. Now, when you're playing a first base strategy with non-random cards, you're going to key off the last 10. So whenever the last card uh, it dealt is a 10, you're going to bet the 10s follow 10s more than they should in a blackjack game. Uh, so when you're doing that, you're going to bet two chips, and when you're not doing it, you're gonna bet one chip. So we're gonna go ahead and bet two chips, and we're gonna we're gonna go ahead. Oops, sounds like somebody else wants in. Let me let him in here. CB. Okay. Yeah. So since our last card was a ten, uh, we're gonna anticipate a ten at first base, and we're gonna go ahead and bet the two chips. So now what we're actually tr betting is. Is that we're betting that we're going to get a 10 on the first card uh, of our uh, first card so when you have a 10 on the first card you have a greater chance to beat the dealer uh, so that's what the whole first base strategy is is uh is all about is predicting a 10 first card and you're going to bet more then so 
we're going to go ahead and, and we got it. So there's a 10. Fine. Okay, now we hope we get it. Okay, well, we didn't, didn't do too bad. That's probably about as good as we could do except for blackjack. Okay, so we got our 20. And that's one thing you want to watch when you're trying to play the first base strategy. And every time you win this bet, when you predict a 10, you want to keep going up by one. Um, one bet. So we got the first one. So that's that's a good one. Hopefully we'll win this hand. Um, let's go here. He'd probably pay basic strategy. Uh, there they got 20. Uh, here he doubled probably. All right, let's see if we got this one. 17. Okay, so there we won. We won that first one. And we make the two bets. Okay, okay now the last card in this one was a six. So we don't want to bet two chips now. We just want to bet one because we're going to predict we're not going to get a 10 on the first card. Remember, you're always going to bet the tens follow tens more than they should and that the cards are clumped up and they're not they're not uh, not random. So what you want to do is, okay, so we'll take that back. Now, just so we can get a better spread here, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and put some uh, $5 chips. So we'll. We'll bet five and a quarter, okay? So that might be easier to fall. So here we're going to make our lowest bet, and because we don't think we're going to get a 10, we're going to say that low cards follow low cards. So let's see what happens here. Well, there's a three, so that worked out pretty good. I got to make sure I can everybody can see what we get here. Yeah, so now obviously we're in a, in a clump of low cards. And again, what you want to keep in mind here, and you see this a lot in the casino, When the low cards are clumped like this, uh, it does a lot of things for the game. Okay. One is it creates more opportunities to double and split, which is a bad thing when you're in a low card clump, okay? So, so this guy is going to split. I don't think they're going to double with an eight, but if this would have been a nine or ten, they probably would have doubled. But here's a low card up. You look at the cards going into the dealer's whole card. The dealer's probably pretty strong. Uh, so you could be in a bad way here, even though – He's got a low card here, um, and, and, and see how how the how the how the game would pan out. Uh, the first guy here is going to hit. That's us. So we'll just hit this hand. Okay, seventeen will stand. This guy's probably going to split, right? So he gets eight. There he would stand. The low cards are still continuing. Four or fourteen. <clears throat> six or 16, probably hit again. 16, he would stand. This guy, I would hit a uh, nine or 19. Okay, so he would obviously stand probably in most cases. Okay, so then the dealer turns their card over. Now, look, if he, if, if he hits, everybody who stood with less than 17, if he gets a 10, they're, they're going to go ahead and lose. And everybody else, um, unless the dealer breaks are, are, are going to lose so uh you know let's let's do the hit card okay well there he got a 10 so he didn't break like everyone thought sounds like we got someone else to join here so let's let him in yeah so again we got lucky we pushed and all these other players lost notice all the low cards and and the low cards clumped together now what you got to watch here is that the 10 is the last hit card. So we want to go ahead and bet more on this one now because we're going to bet the 10s follow 10s more than they randomly should. Okay, so we want to what we're betting is instead of five, we push that, we're going to put out a five to one chip here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and bet that, that we're going to get a high card on the first one. So let's see what happens. Let me just make sure nobody else is coming in here. Okay, so we're good. So tens follow tens more than they randomly should. There they are. Can you see that okay? Well, unfortunately. Okay, so we got our 20. We got our we got our 20 again there. Okay, so how often have you seen this? Um, you know, tens tens are following tens. And everybody would stand, and we just pushed the hand. We probably would have won. But again, the last card uh, dealt was a ten, so we want to go ahead and leave our high bet out there. 
and see what happens this time. Another 10, three, jack, five, 12. Okay, so now we're in a situation break, um, if, if we think they're actually gonna break. Um, so, you know, it, it's, 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 it, it's a judgment call. Uh, but here's what I'm thinking. It's 12 against a five. A lot of people would stand. You don't know what the dealer has. So, so let's go ahead and we'll play basic strategy here. I have a propensity to hit this. As a matter of fact, if I was in the casino, I would hit it. So I'm going to play it like I would. I would. When I have a 12 against a five, unless there's real indication that, that the dealer has a stiff card. So um, I, I would probably hit this. Okay, so uh, 19. And the reason is is because the dealer doesn't, when the cards are clumped up in these clumped up shoes, is they don't break like they should. So I'm going to assume the cards are non-random, so I'm, I'm going to do this. Listen, if you want to learn basic strategy, there's a million guys that will teach a basic strategy. But I find it better to hit. Okay, so if, if I wouldn't have hit, um, he would have had a 19, right? So let's see what happens here. Well, we broke the dealer, so so that's a good thing. So uh, you got to remember that when you're playing in club cards, that you got to hit a little bit more because tens will follow tens more than they should, and low cards would follow low cards before. Okay, remember here's the last card, ten. So we're gonna bet tens are gonna follow tens. Let's see if we get the other ten. So since we're doing that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make the big bet again, and let's see if we get the ten. So here we go. We got it again. That's actually you should we should have went up a little bit more, but that's okay. Twelve. Okay. Again, you want to make sure uh, uh, that you're 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 gonna hit a little bit more than what you should. So again, uh, if I hit the the thir the uh, fifteen against the uh, the fifteen against the deuce, I'm certainly gonna hit twelve against the three. And and honestly, based Basic strategy tells me anyway, so uh, I would certainly hit this. Okay, 21. This guy would probably stand. A7 uh, against a 3, he'd probably stand. Some people double it. I, I don't think it's a good double, but uh, anyway, let, let's see what happens. 9, 19. So the dealer didn't break. These two guys would have lost, but fortunately we won. We got a 10 is the last hit, hit card, so we're going to go ahead and leave our big bet out there. Okay, and let's see what we get this time here. Five. Well, we didn't get it that time. You're not going to get it, obviously, every time. And you obviously can't win every every hand either. But let's see what happens. Okay, so nine. Uh, this is kind of a – this is a round here where you, as a blackjack player, um, just, just for informational purposes, aces play high and low. So one, two, three, four, five. There's five low cards and two. Too high crown. So there's a, a reasonable upper chance that, that he has a stiff hand. Uh, you know, if you're doing a whole card read, although here's a low card, high card, low card, high card. Some people believe in zipper patterns, which probably uh, is caused by some uh, some clumping. But anyway, we're going to hope he's stiff, but let's see what kind of hit card we got. Okay, so now we have nine and seven, which is 16. Um, Look, low cards are running. Let, let's say we lost. We lost one of them. I, I hope he's not stiff now. But let's see. This guy would hit right. Nineteen. He'd probably hit. No, it didn't matter. So it was a C type hand. No matter what we did, we're gonna lose. So the last card wasn't a high. It wasn't a ten. So now we're only gonna bet the one. Okay. So let's see what happens here. And, and we got a low card, so everything's kind of working consistent. 12, 14, 11. Okay, so 12 against a 3. Again, it's a low round. There's no 10s on the table. Remember, we play blackjack nowadays. If you really want to try to win a little bit, 
is play it round over round. You look at the round and go, this is a low round. It's probably predominantly low cards. The dealer's probably low in the hole. Get low, well, it's not neutral card, low card, low card, low card. We're probably going to get a low card. Okay, so we got a seven. So that, that's a good hit. A lot of people would stand on that. Hit, hit those 12s against 13s, even if you, you find yourself in a high round. Uh, this guy would probably hit. Sometimes they double. Let's He would stand there. This guy would double, right, 18. See if we can get this 10, 15. Okay, 17. And again, the dealer didn't break. Remember, this is this is a low card, so we're going to leave our low hand out. But we did win our low bet. So there we go. Still a low card, so low cards follow low cards more than they should. So we're just going to leave our $5 bet out. Any questions or comments so far? Okay. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and leave our low bet out. And again, notice low cards following low cards. So we didn't get a good starting card. So that's why we have our low bet out. Get a good hand. Okay. So the, the round is, is somewhat random. There's a mix of cards. Uh, <clears throat> there's no indication of what you're going to get. Now, this is where are you implement a hit card read. Uh, it's kind of random. Like here's an eight, here's a five. Who knows what this card is? Here's a nine. There's there's no clumps. You know, uh, you can double it if you want. Um, you know, for me, I, I would just actually just hit it. I probably should have doubled it, huh? <laughs> okay. This guy would stand. This guy would hit. Uh, uh, seven, 16, he'd hit it again. Okay, so he broke. Notice they pick up the break cards first. Let's see what happens here. 15, 16, and he breaks there. Remember, the last card's 10, so that's going to trigger our high bet on the next one, but we won the low bet again, so which is interesting. Now, notice we're winning the low bet. You got to be careful when you start winning the low bet too much. Uh, you got to analyze whether it's because of you're hitting more and it's your card play. So you got to be real careful to know why you're winning. Okay, so now we're we're in we're in a round where we actually want to. Want to get our, our high bet out, and we're looking for something, you know, that our high card uh, from from the first from the first card because the last card was a ten again. So we got the the, the twenty five dollar bet out. So let's see if we get a high card. Well, we got a nine. High cards clump with nines. Five. That's good. Okay, seventeen. Well, uh, sixteen. Okay. So obviously, there's only one way we can win uh, with a seventeen if the dealer breaks. Uh, 13, uh, you know what? He probably wouldn't have hit, but that, that's okay. Uh, there's 15. He made a mistake, and he breaks there. So uh, we got we got somebody played uh, against probably what they would have here. So that happens once in a while. So we won the high bet. The dealer broke. Okay, so the last card was a 10. So, again, you want to leave the high card, the high bet out. Tens follow tens. And if you don't think that, just go go watching the casino. <laughs> okay, don't take my word for it. Okay, so this is this is obviously a high round. Okay, so and, and again, you, you see this shit all the time, and and when you're playing blackjack, is all the high cards are clumped up. Hopefully, he's got a seven uh, or an eight. Okay, so we won the high bet, which is good. Now, notice the last the last card was an eight. So we don't want to make leave our high bet out. We want to pull that back. Pull that back. And then go ahead and, and put our low bet out because we're not anticipating it can. And that's the whole essence of uh, of first base blackjack. A, a couple of guys said, how did you discover this or where did you learn this? I watched, I learned this in the Claridge, quite honestly, uh, in, the, in the high stakes room back in the late 90s, early 90s, I'm sorry. Uh, the Asian players uh, play this way. Uh, they'll they'll look for clumps of ten, and they'll bet that tens follow tens. So, uh, no, that's right. We had the low bet out. It was an eight. So, so uh, you know, we just happened to get it again. We're getting a lot of twelves. 
Okay, so for me, I, I'm going to hit my 12 against the 16, and I, I broke it. So that that was probably that was a mistake. But I always hit the 12 for the most part. This guy would stand. This guy would split 10, then he double that. Nine, he double that. 20 looks like they got 12, and it's stake there. Uh, we we played a hand where we hit a hand that we should have. Uh, and and what I mean by shouldn't have is not that I didn't play basic strategy. Is that I won a hand if I'd have done something different, I could have won it. That's the only mistake in blackjack. Okay, so the last card was ten. So let let's bet we're going to get a ten again. Let's see if we get it. Right, we got a deuce. Six, not so hot. Okay, so six. Not too good. Well, we're going to hit it. 16, and of course, we'll, we'll stand there. 14, everybody's going to stand and hope the dealer breaks, and he does it. 19, so we lost one of the high bets. Low card, so we're going to bet just a nickel. Okay. So let's see if we get the low card. I got a 9, So, but we didn't get the 10. 9, 8, 8, ace, uh-oh, 20. Okay, so we got a 20. They'll ask you for insurance. If this card here was a 10, going into the whole card, I would take insurance. If it isn't, I don't. Okay. The, always remember, too, with when uh, and I, I mentioned this uh, in, in the forum, is if the cards are truly clumped together or non-random, the third base player's cards are going to be much like the dealer's cards. So, uh, but this isn't a, this. I will take insurance because, and the only reason I'm not going to take insurance has nothing to do with what I have as nothing from from my perspective how i play a non-random card blackjack it only has to do with what is the last card before the whole card if it's a 10 and i'm gonna bet he has insurance um okay so let they'll check before we play it now so we can play it out we're gonna stand he's gonna stand and of course he'll probably hit and he breaks last card is a 10 so far okay so he has a two actually so let's go ahead and play this out. Okay, so 18. So last card's a five. We just won the small bet. That's it. Okay, so here we go again. Going to leave the small bet out again. Six, eight, four, jack, 13. Okay, so 13 probably hit that. 28 he's staying he'd probably double blackjack <laughs> okay so we lost it thought we had a great hit there in one so no two card winners so. okay so still still a low bet last card was a so i think you get the idea anytime the the last hit card or the last card before the round is a low card you just go ahead and you bet your smallest bet Okay, so eight, it would just play pretty close to basic strategy here. This is uh, 16, 19, he'd probably double it. 15, and break, so we got that back. And now, the last card is 10. So we're going to go ahead, and we're going to put our five units. Let's see, what are we up? We're up two or three big chips. Let's see if we can get, see if we can get one more, see if we get the 10 here. Oh, we got the nine. Nine's not too bad. So I'm not going to give a nine back. Okay. Uh, obviously, we'll stand. And and notice when you when you bet like this, if you're getting pat hands, that means it's playing correctly. If you're not getting pat hands, then it's not a good thing. Okay. But it's playing correctly. Here's eight, eighteen. Oh, I beat us. Okay. So. Let's let's take that win. I think we got three or four chips, and let's switch over now. Let let's do the third base strategy now, and let's talk about that in a little bit. So I think we won three or four chips, three or four big chips. And I think I think we broke about even with the small chips. So so we're doing pretty good. So now let's talk about how to play on random cards. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start off with a progression. And 
you, you got to remember it's based upon the premise we'll still say in the same shoe that the cards from the third base position are most like the dealers if the cards are non-random okay so that's the most important thing to remember so let's go ahead and and deal out the cards here now we're playing third base Okay, 12, he's going to stand. Most people would play basic, he'd stand. This guy would double, 13. Now, I'm going to hit this for one reason only, because this hand, this is a three, okay, right before my hit card. But this is a low card. Don't know what that is. This is a low card, and this is a low card. So I'm going to assume, he, I'm going to assume he's strong. So let's hit it. Okay, 16. Low cards are running. I'll probably – I probably again but let's see okay probably probably I, i'm gonna probably put myself in a position that no matter what i did i couldn't lose yeah no actually i broke the dealer if i wouldn't have taken that hit card the dealer would have made 20. okay so that's that's the beauty of, of knowing the concept that the dealer's cards and the third base players cards are probably pretty much alike you got to take that hit once in a while Okay, so there's my there's my nickel. We busted the dealer and everybody else is happy. But when I hit it the first time, they all yelled at me, right? Isn't that what happens? Okay. So now we're going to stay with the one. And we're going to go ahead and play some more. Five. Nine. Sixteen again. Okay. Well, this guy would probably hit double. This guy probably stand. I'm going to stand with sixteen. Even though, well, six, low card, low card. The probability of breaking is too high. Plus, um, there were two high cards here. So let's see what happens, see if we made the right play. Yeah, we did. Okay, so there we go. You know, if it would have been a 12 or something, I may have considered hitting. Okay, so now we're back to one. We're still betting one. We actually haven't lost uh, two hands in a row yet, so. Okay, let's go again. Five, eight, three, two, eight, 18, 13, 12. Okay, so the eight here is going to hit. 10, probably hit again. 21, 18, 13. I'm going to hit 21. Now, the reason I hit, I always hit a 13 against the 12. I'm going to assume the cards. I'm going to get low cards uh, instead of high cards all the time. 12, 16, 20. So we beat the dealer by hitting. One. So again, notice I was talking about the third base players' cards and the, and the dealer's cards are most often alike when the cards are clumped together. Okay, let's go a little bit more here. Now, when you play like this, everybody's going to call you crazy, okay? So you got to get used to it. And, like, guys, you know, on this channel, they'll say, you don't know what you're doing. Look, man, I've been playing for 40 years. I know what club cards are, and I know how they beat you in this game. They beat basic strategy players hands down. They don't stand a chance. Okay, this guy's staying, this guy's staying. Well, we're going to hit. There's not much more we can do. 15, 16. And we're going to break there. Okay. And 16. Well, we probably should have stood, huh? <laughs> and he breaks. Okay. So now we were betting due on first base when we went over the first base strategy. Now we're going to bet a progression. So we're going to go to three here. So what we're looking to do is trying to get a back and forth game. And we're going to bet that the dealer can't beat us three times in a row. Okay, so 16, 13, 20, and hopefully we uh, make our hand. This guy would probably hit 18, 17. He'd hit. Everybody would stand. 13, 18. So we won. So, again, it is third base. It's based upon a back-and-forth game because your hand and the dealer hand are going to be most alike, so it's – a third base is 
when the cards are non-random, you'll see the games go back and forth quite a bit. So if you bet like they can't beat you three times in a row, it's a good way to play. So you're not going for one hand, trying to win one hand. You're trying, you're doing the target, which is why a negative progression works really well at third base. So once you win the second bet, you go back to one. And we'll do a couple more hands here. Get my cards here, falling all over the place. Okay, here we go. So there's an ace, three, there's a five, six, one, two, 14. Okay, and again, notice that my hand and the dealer's hand are probably much longer. Most people don't notice stuff like that, okay? Also notice, let's see, one, two, three, four, five low cards and two high cards. Aces, when they run with low cards, are, are considered low cards, at least in club style blackjack. So let, let's see what's going on here. Uh, this guy would double, right? This guy would hit. Now, here's a, here's something that you can try once in a while, and sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. When it doesn't work out, like people are going to go go mad at you, okay? But I, you know, I would probably hit this because of the three. Well, I got I busted by one. Okay, so we lost that one. So if I wouldn't have hit, I have still lost. Okay, you gotta you gotta remember that. That because your hand in the dealer's hand is going to be most alike. But I took a chance there because this was the three, and I expected low cards to follow low cards. But no matter what, here, yeah, I, I still probably I still wouldn't have won. So when you make a mistake hitting and you bust out, it's really not that bad big of a deal, especially if you're betting a progression. Okay, so now again we're we're just we're targeting trying to win one hand out of three. Okay, so now we're going to go to the three, and let's see what happens. One more place. That's not so good. But let's see what happens. Maybe it's good. Okay. Okay, this guy would stand. This guy would certainly double. Okay. We're just going to hit. Okay. There's no tens on the table. He's Here's a low card. Here's a low card. Here's a low ace. Probably low in the hole. Although here's a kind of a neutral card afterwards. Let's just hit this. You don't want to make bad doubles. So if you want to become a better player, especially in the casino, is stop making – all those crazy doubles when you don't see it. We got a five. How many times does that happen? Okay. So now we got to think, okay, well, we got 14 again. Ah, uh, should we hit that again or should we stand and let the dealer break? Well, there isn't a 10 on the table. Let's hit it. Okay. There it is. Okay. Now the reason I hit it was because there's all low cards on the table. There's low cards going into the whole card. He's probably strong. Okay, so now we have nine and eight, which is 17, which the only way we can, if we wouldn't have hit it, the only way we could have won is if the dealer busts. At least we have a chance of a push now. Okay, so let's see what happens. 21. We gave the dealer 21. Everybody's going to freak out. Okay. So if we, if we would have, we would have, we would have busted. That's going to happen once in a while. Okay. Now, remember, the cards don't know who's dealing. The cards don't know who's dealing. And also, too, if you if you buy into basic strategy and card count, you buy into all that nonsense. Well, that's not nonsense. It's, it's, it's what happens when um, they'll sit there and argue with you about um, – about, uh, uh, you shouldn't hit, you shouldn't do this, you should do that. It changes the card. The only reason, it, if you assume that the cards are supposed to be random, it doesn't matter what you do or how you play your cards. So anyway, okay, so we're at the six bet now. This is We're, we're not going to lose three in a row. We're going to try not to lose three in a row. Here's a 13. This would hit, right? 14, hit again. 21, 13 would hit. 17. Okay. So we're 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 gonna stand 17. We got we gotta hope the dealer busts. Okay, six, a bus 16. So again, the power of it is it's hard for the dealer to beat you three times in a row. And there we just we still made one chip. So as long as you if you play your third base this way, when a little bit more often, the chances of you losing three hands in a row 
are very, very slim. So now once you get back to the, you win any bet of the progression, you're going to go back to one. Let's let's do one more. Okay, here's a nine. Here's a two. Here's a four. Uh-oh. Okay, 20, Stan. 14. He'd stand. He'd probably hit, right? 14, probably hit again. 20. Boy, we could have used that six. I mean, who knows what the dealer has? It's probably strong, so we got to hit. So we're going to lose the first one of the progression. And he has 20. Okay. So now we're going to go to the three. Remember, the only way we can lose is if we lose, we're going to go one, four, six. If we lose any bet of the progression, that's a good one. 18, 20. Okay. So we're in a good, pretty good position here. This guy's going to hit, right? 13, probably hit again. He busts out. 20, of course, we're going to stand. And we win, we win the second bet of the progression. When we do that, we go right back to one. Again, so, so the whole concept is to hit more and bet a, a mild progression and, and not let the dealer beat you three times in a row. And if you can do that, you're going to win at blackjack. Forget every hand as, as one as trying to win one hand and making a big bet on one hand okay so 9 14 19 everybody else would stand 17 well we got lucky and won that one so it goes on and on and on okay so i'm going to wrap it up for there you know i'm going to do this uh quite a bit talking about non-random cards but so the first thing you know what i want to talk about is hopefully you understood the uh betting uh betting that low cards will follow low cards and betting high cards will follow high cards use the first base ploy as we call it When the last hit card is a 10, just bet more at first base. Uh, third base will, will, will refine this strategy uh, more and more. I had the sacrifice player uh, strategy uh, team play blackjack for non-random cards up on the forum. Uh, you want to go ahead and grab that. Uh, it's how you have a first base player and a third base player. It's a really good book uh, that we wrote about uh, sacrifice player. And, uh, you know, we'll be doing more and more of this playing online with blackjack. You know, if you want to learn more about it, Hey, come on over to the club and, uh, you know, uh, join the club and uh, we'll be talking about it. So we'll see you again here on YouTube and, and other places uh, uh, real soon. Uh, and please subscribe if you uh, liked what you saw. And, again, you're not going to see traditional uh, what everybody's been teaching you for the, since 1960, man. Uh, you want to go learn basic strategy, go ahead. Uh, there's a certain time to play it, but there's other times when you shouldn't play it. So hope that gave you a little insight. Thanks a lot for watching. So what